Now we have this case scenario number 5 which is on salary and tax computation. Mr. Hardik age 45 years, please underline 45 years. His age would be needed for tax computation. He is appointed as senior executive officer in Sky India Limited, Mumbai, underline Mumbai on 1st February 2022. That means he is appointed last year, financial year 21-22 during the last two months. In the scale of or in the grade of 35,000-3,500-65,000. What does this mean? This means ever since he joined 1st February 2022 till the next 12 months, his salary, initial salary will be 35,000 per month. Next year onwards, after he finishes 12 months from 1st February 22, once he finishes 12 months, his salary for the next 12 months will be increased. Monthly salary will be increased by 3,500 per month. It will become 38,500. In the next year, it will once again be increased by 3,500 per month. It will become 42,000. So on till the time salary reaches 65,000. Any which ways, he is being paid dearness allowance at the rate of 40% of basic pay and the basic pay is forming and this dearness allowance is forming part of retirement benefits 40% of basic now first of all in this paragraph we need to find out how much will be his salary for the current year so if you can understand his salary right now from 1st february 2022 till 31st january 2023 will be 35000 per month and then it will be increased from 1st February 2023 it will be increased to 38,500 per month let us understand how much will be his salary for the current year when did he join he joined on 1st February 2022 with 35,000 his salary for the first 12 months that means till 31st January 2023 will be 35,000 per month and then 1st February 2023 onwards salary will be 38500 for the next 12 months period till January 2023. So in financial year 2022-23 we have 12 months. The current year starts from April 2022 and goes on till 31st March 2023. In this scenario first 10 months of financial year 22-23 first 10 months are falling in financial year 21 are falling in this particular range 35,000 and remaining two months last two months are falling under 38,500 category whereby salary is increased so first 10 months salary will be 35,000 per month which will be 350,000 rupees and for the last two months salary will be 38,500 38,500 into 2 will be 77,000 total salary for this period 20 to 23 will be 427,000 coming back so his basic salary will be 427000 and his dearness allowance will be 40% of the same which we will calculate second paragraph talks about he is given rent free accommodation unfurnished accommodation on 1st May 2022 which he occupied only from 1st October 2022 that means for the last 6 months October, November, December and January, February, March company pays lease rent of 5000 per month that means company does not own employer does not own this residential accommodation this accommodation is taken by company employer on rent and they are paying 5000 per month now the question is the value of this perquisite should be calculated from 1st april 2022 the beginning of the year or it should be calculated from 1st may 2022 ever since it is provided to the employee or it should be calculated from 1st october 2022 ever since it is occupied by employee the date from which provided to the employee or the date from which occupied by employee or from the beginning of the current year naturally will not be from the beginning of the current year this perquisite is to be either calculated from 1st may 22 or 1st october 22 correct answer will be 1st october 22 the period for which employee actually occupied the intervening five months period from 1st may 22 to 1st october 22 employee did not use this accommodation therefore even though employer might have paid the lease rent for the five months period from 1st may till 1st october employer might have paid the rent but employee has not been benefited employer will get the deduction but employee will be taxed only with regards to last six months from 1st october 2022 so in case where the employer does not own the residential accommodation then how to find out the taxable value of this perquisite that we will have a look at before we jump to the third paragraph let's just finish it off rent free accommodation rent free accommodation which is not owned by employer employer has taken it on rent 
we know pretty well that in case where the accommodation is not owned by employer then as per rule 3 sub rule 1 the taxable value of this perquisite will be either 15% of salary or the amount of lease rent paid or payable by employer lease rent paid or payable by employer is 5000 per month it is given to us into we will consider it only from 1st october 2022 for 6 months it will be 30000 but how much will be 15% of salary and what do you mean by salary salary is meaning was salary here would mean basic salary plus dearness allowance forming part of retirement benefits plus commission all types of commission whether based on turnover achieved by employee or not based on turnover achieved by employee all types of commission plus all taxable allowances perquisites are not to be taken into account or even bonus is also not to be taken into account and employer's contribution to provident fund account is also not to be taken into account only four items basic plus dearness allowance forming part of retirement benefits in this question basic is 4 lakh 27000 which we just calculated it out and dearness allowance is 40% of basic which will be 1 lakh 70800 1 lakh 70800 plus commission is not there nil plus allowances allowances we will see question is we have yet to read we will have a look at it we will come back here later but let's understand till here that either 30000 will be taxable value or 15% of salary whichever is lower so taxable value of this particular perquisite will keep pending third paragraph he has been provided with a car of above 1.6 liters above 1.6 liter capacity which is used by him for private purposes only not for official purpose the actual cost of the car is 8 lakh rupees and the monthly expenditure of car is 5000 which is fully met by the employer car is owned by the employer now here couple of details required for valuation of this particular perquisite number 1 whether what is the capacity whether it is more than 1.6 liter or up to 1.6 liter for what purpose it is being used and who owns the car car is owned by employer and how much is the monthly maintenance expenditure as far as car valuation is concerned i would like to take you to the salary chapter salary chapter this particular point car is owned by or hired by employer and maintenance cost is also borne by employer first category employer employer both the things are done by employer and the car is used entirely for personal purpose then two things will be taxable here number one value of the car as far as value of the car is concerned 10% of the original cost of the car will be taken into account and as far as maintenance charges are concerned if the car is for private purpose then entire maintenance expenditure incurred by employee will be incurred by employer will be taken into account minus any amount recovered from employee if any if driver is also provided then 900 per month for driver that we will see but primarily two things 10% of the original cost of the car and plus actual maintenance charges how much are the actual maintenance charges actual maintenance charges are 5000 which is monthly so actual maintenance charges 60000 rupees for the whole year assuming car is given from the beginning of the year and the original cost of the car is 8 lakhs so how much will be taxable for car plus for maintenance as far as car is concerned 10% of the cost of the car will be taken into account 10% of 8 lakh as far as car is concerned 80000 will be the taxable value of this perquisite as far as maintenance cost is concerned actual amount of expenditure will be taken into account which is 60000 for the whole year total amount in connection with car will be 1 lakh 40000 so in this question first paragraph talks about basic salary and dearness allowance second paragraph talks about rent free accommodation third paragraph talks about car so car rent free unfurnished accommodation and then we have basic salary and then dearness allowance basic salary we have already calculated 4 lakh 27000 dearness allowance also we calculated somewhere down unfurnished accommodation we have yet to compute car valuation will be 1 lakh 40000 proceeding further he pays lump sum premium of 1 lakh 20000 towards health insurance that is medical claim insurance for self and spouse wife wife is aged 43 years he himself is 45 years of age However this premium mediclaim insurance premium which entitles him to claim deduction under section 80d up to 25000 because both are non senior citizens for 40 but this premium is being paid for 48 months that is for 4 years on 1st October 2022 that means it is being paid from 1st October 2022 plus 48 months or 4 years will be he has paid till 30th September 2026 in case if it is paid in lump sum then 80d subsection 4a states that that the deduction will be allowed equally over a period of 
equally for each previous year involved in the matter. He has paid this by account pay check. That means not paid by cash. Had it been paid by cash, then nothing would have been allowed. But it is paid by account pay check. How much is allowed on account of mediclaim premium if it is paid in lump sum? Then the answer is ATD subsection 4A. If the amount of mediclaim premium has been paid in lump sum for more than one year at a time, then in such situation, ATD deduction will be allowed for each of the relevant previous years equally. Underline equally. This is the theory note. However, it is for each previous year equally. It does not say for each year, but it says for each previous year equally. What does that mean? That means if it is paid, for example, if it is paid, one lakh twenty thousand is paid on 18 July 2022 for four years. I have taken similar example in our notes. Okay, that is from 18 July 2022 till till 17 July 2026. Agreed, it is for four years. But though it is for four years. The actually number of previous years involved the number of previous years involved is not four years but five years there are five previous years involved in the matter how five years from previous year 20 to 23 23 24 24 25 25 26 and 26 27 if you can understand the last date will be 18 july 2022 till 17 july 2026 now 17 july 2026 falls in previous year 26 27 Therefore, 1,20,000 is to be divided equally amongst 5 previous years and not 4 previous years. And accordingly, it will be 24,000 per annum. So, how many years are involved in our question? In our question also, 1st October 22 it is paid, that is paid in financial year 22-23. And it is paid till 30th September 2026, that means it is paid till financial year 2026-27. If you observe, there are 5 previous years involved. Which 5 previous years? I am writing this side. The previous years involved are 22, 23, 23, 24, 24, 25, 25, 26, and 26, 27. And it will be allowed equally. That means 1 lakh 20,000 will be divided by 5 previous years. And accordingly, it is not years, it is 5 previous years. The number of years involved are 4 years, but number of previous years involved are 5. Accordingly, it will be 24,000 per annum. However, restricted to overall limit of 25,000, 24,000 is very much within that 25,000 limit. Therefore, deduction under section 80D will be 24,000. Further, it says he also contributes 1,50,000 towards PPF. Then, this will entitle him to claim deduction under section 80C, entire 1,50,000. This paragraph talks about chapter 6 a reduction. So, salary is practically over. Question is about to come to an end. As far as salary is concerned, if you observe, we have basic salary, dearness allowance, rent-free unfurnished accommodation and car. Only four things are involved. Of course, there will be standard deduction and professional tax. Professional tax is not given. Standard deduction 50,000 will be allowable. However, further it says Hardik is interested to opt for concessional tax regime available under section 115 BAC. Now, in case he opts for 115 BAC, First of all, understand it says he is interested. That means there will be a question. One of the MCQ will be on determining the correct tax liability wherever the tax liability is lesser, whether under this new tax regime under 115 BAC or under old tax regime. There will be one point asking us to calculate tax under both of them. It does not say question does not say that Hardik is opting for 115 BAC. It says he is interested in opting for. So we will certainly have to calculate tax under 115 BAC as well as old tax regime. In case he opts for 115 BAC, then two things will go wrong. He will not get standard deduction from salary chapter and he will not be getting chapter 6 a reduction. ATC, ATD, none of them would be allowable. These two will not be allowed. And the, not only the tax rate but even amount of income will also undergo changes if he opts for 115 BAC. That's it. Based on the facts in the given case scenario given above, choose the most appropriate answer. We'll be calculating one by one. Okay, so let's finish off with the rent free accommodation wala point. Rent free accommodation as per rule 3 1 will be lower of the following two either 15% of salary, which we have yet to calculate, or it will be actual amount of lease rent paid by employer, which is 30,000 for six months now salary here would mean basic basic we have dearness allowance also we have we have calculated bonus is not there and we don't even have to take bonus commission is nil allowances we had kept pending allowances are also nil so technically 15 percent of total of these four items four lakh twenty seven thousand plus one lakh seventy thousand eight hundred will be 
फाइव नाइन्टी सेवन एट हंड्रेड इन टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट एटी नाइन सिक्स सेवेंटी द आंसर ऑफ दिस विल बी एटी नाइन सिक्स सेवेंटी एटी नाइन सिक्स सेवेंटी वर्सेज थर्टी थाउजेंड एटी नाइन सिक्स सेवेंटी विच इज फिफ्टीन परसन ऑफ फिफ्टीन परसन ऑफ हा मच फोर लैख ट्वेंटी सेवन थाउजेंड प्लस वन लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड फाइव नाइन्टी सेवन एट हंड्रेड फिफ्टीन परसन ऑफ फाइव नाइन्टी सेवन एट हंड्रेड एटी नाइन सिक्स सेवेंटी और थर्टी थाउजेंड विच एवर इज लोअर देर फॉर लोअर ऑफ द टू इज थर्टी थाउजेंड अकॉर्डिंगली द टैक्सेबल वैल्यू ऑफ दिस पर्क विजिट विल बी थर्टी थाउजेंड वी विल कम बैक हियर बट बिफोर दैट लेट्स फिनिश ऑफ विद द एम सी क्यूज फाइव पॉइंट वन फर्स्ट वन वॉट वुड बी द वैल्यू ऑफ द रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन चार्जेबल ऑफ टैक्स ओ वाओ दिस इज ओन दिस ओनली इज अ फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन आंसर द वैल्यू ऑफ रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन विच जस्ट कैलकुलेटेड विल बी थर्टी थाउजेंड You can have a look at this. As per Rule Three, Sub Rule One, half it is thirty thousand. So lower of these two, fifteen percent of salary in case where accommodation is not owned by employer, fifteen percent of salary or rent paid by employer, whichever is lower. Our answer is D, thirty thousand. Let's check what's institute's answer. Institute's answer is also D, five point one, thirty thousand. Now coming to five point two. What would be what amount of health insurance premium paid during the previous year 20 to 23 by Mr. Hardik can be claimed as deduction while computing total income in case he does not opt to pay tax under 115 BSC. In case he opts for 115 BSC, then Chapter 6A is not allowed. Okay, we have already calculated it out. It will be 1 lakh 20 thousand divided by five previous years instead of four. Five previous year will be 24 thousand restricted to overall limit of 25 thousand. So answer is 24 thousand C. Let's check institute's answer. Institute's answer is also C, twenty-four thousand. Five point three now. What would be the perquisite value of car chargeable to tax in hands of Mr. Hardik? This we have already calculated. Car will be eighty thousand plus. For car it will be eighty thousand, and for maintenance cost sixty thousand. Total one lakh forty thousand will be taxable. So our answer is D, one lakh forty thousand. Let's check what's institute's answer. Institute's answer is also D, five lakh. Sorry, one lakh forty thousand. Five point four now. What would you Would you advise Mr. Hardik to opt to pay tax under Section 115 BSC? Now four options are given. This is pretty interesting. Would you advise Mr. Hardik to opt for 115 BSC? Now here we'll have to literally calculate tax liability under new tax regime under 115 BSC and without applying 115 BSC that is under old tax regime. So four options are given. A, B, C, D. Big big answers are there. Let's just work it out. So for answering to this question, we'll have to first compute his total income, starting with basic salary, which will be thirty-five thousand for the first ten months and increased by three thousand five hundred for the last two months, February and March. Accordingly, salary will be four lakh twenty-seven thousand that we have already calculated. Now, basic salary is done. Dearness allowance is forty percent of four lakh twenty-seven thousand, which is one lakh seventy thousand eight hundred, which we had just calculated. If you recollect, one lakh seventy thousand eight hundred. Okay, now. Perquisite value of car. Car value will be one lakh forty thousand. That we, that also we have calculated out. And rent free unfurnished accommodation will be thirty thousand. This also we have calculated out. Gross salary will be how much? Gross salary will be four lakh twenty seven thousand plus one lakh seventy thousand eight hundred plus one lakh forty thousand plus thirty thousand. Gross salary will be seven sixty seven eight hundred. Seven lakh sixty seven thousand eight hundred minus standard deduction. Standard deduction is fifty thousand. There is no professional tax, so fifty thousand I am subtracting. After fifty thousand, it will be seven lakh seventeen thousand eight hundred. Seven seventeen eight hundred is not only net taxable salary. Since he does not have any other income, this only becomes his gross total income also. From that, we have two chapter six a deduction under ATC ATD. PP PPF is one lakh fifty thousand, and mediclaim premium one lakh twenty thousand divided by four previous year twenty four thousand. We have calculated it out. One lakh seventy four thousand will be the total chapter six a deduction. Now this chapter six a deduction is not allowable, and standard deduction is also not allowable. This and this, these two things are not allowable in case he opts to govern by one one five BSC. Seven sixty seven eight hundred minus fifty thousand standard deduction seven one seven eight hundred minus one lakh seventy four thousand chapter six a deduction five forty three eight hundred. Five lakh forty three eight hundred will be his net taxable income, which is popularly called as NTI. Now on this NTI, we will have to compute the tax. Now for tax computation, in case he opts to be governed by 115 BSC, then his income will be 767800. He won't get standard deduction. He won't get 
चैप्टर सिक्स है डिडक्शन इन केस ही डज नॉट ऑप्ट टू बी गवर्न बाई वन वन फाइव बी एस सी देन इज इनकम विल बी फाइव फोर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड एंड अंडर वन वन फाइव बी एस सी सेवन सिक्सटी सेवन एट हंड्रेड प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस विल बी कैलकुलेटिंग टैक्स नाउ नाउ कंप्यूटेशन ऑफ टैक्स लाइबिलिटी ऑप्शन ए ऑप्शन बी दिस इज बी ऑप्शन इन केस हार्दिक डज नॉट ऑप्ट टू बी गवर्न बाई वन वन फाइव बी एस सी देन इनकम विल बी फाइव फोर्टी थ्री एट हंड्रेड जस्ट समथिंग वॉट वी जस्ट कैलकुलेटेड आउट हियर Now here this income, entire income is normal income. His age is forty five years, so basic exemption limit will be two lakh fifty thousand. First two lakh fifty thousand tax will be nil. Next two lakh fifty thousand at the rate of five percent tax will be twelve thousand five hundred. And on balance forty three eight hundred out of five forty three eight hundred will forty three eight hundred will be taxed at twenty percent. So forty three eight hundred into point two. Eight say eight seven six zero will be the tax. Eight seven six zero plus twelve thousand five hundred plus nil will be. Plus twelve thousand five hundred, twenty one two sixty, twenty one thousand two sixty will be total tax. Plus surcharge will not be there. Health and education says why surcharge will not be there because income does not exceed ten lakh rupees. Into point zero four eight fifty rupees will be is health and education says. Plus twenty one two sixty plus eight fifty. Twenty-two thousand one hundred and ten. Twenty-two thousand one one zero will be the net tax liability. This is already in multiple of ten rupees, so we are not rounding it off. Second option, in case he opts for one one five BAC, then his age does not matter because basic exemption is same for everyone. But in any which ways, he would have been eligible for two lakh fifty thousand only. Now his income will be seven sixty seven eight hundred, as I explained it to you here. This particular income seven sixty seven eight hundred without standard deduction, without chapter six. Now here. First two lakh fifty thousand will be basic exemption tax will be zero. Next two lakh fifty thousand will be at five percent. Next two lakh fifty thousand will be at ten percent and balance seventeen eight hundred. So now seven lakh fifty thousand is gone. Balance is seventeen eight hundred will be taxed at fifteen percent. Five five percent increase in the rate. You know pretty well. Twelve thousand five hundred will be the tax here. Twenty five thousand will be the tax here. And seventeen eight hundred into fifteen percent will have to calculate it out. Seventeen eight hundred into point one five two six seven zero. Two six seven zero plus. Twelve thousand five hundred plus twenty five thousand forty thousand one seventy forty thousand one seventy plus surcharge will not be there but health and education says at the rate of four percent. Needless to calculate, it seems that this liability will be higher but still one six zero seven rounded off one six zero seven total tax liability thus will be one six zero seven plus forty thousand one seventy forty one thousand triple seven. Forty one triple seven rounded off to the nearest multiple of ten rupee. It will be forty one thousand seven hundred and eighty. Forty one seven eighty is much higher than twenty two one one zero. Therefore, he should not opt for one one five BAC. He should go for old tax regime, normal tax. I hope you have understood the computation difference between the two. Many people apply the correct rate out it here. Rates were correct, but they forgot that that income would be seven sixty seven eight hundred and not same as this five forty three eight hundred. Whenever one one five BAC is opted for, you need to check the correct income. Income taxable will be higher than the income taxable under normal provisions. Apart from rate, rates will be lower. Here the rates will be lower, but income will be higher. So what is the correct answer to five point four? A B C D. Correct answer will be D. No, Hardik should not opt for one one five BAC. What is the question? Question is advice whether he should opt or not. For one one five BAC, the answer is he should not opt since, as per normal provisions of the Act, his tax liability would be twenty two one one zero. That that's what we calculated, which is being lower than the tax liability under one one five BAC. Other answers are yes is a wrong answer. Yes is a wrong answer. He should opt. No, let's check what C point. Hardik should not opt since, as per normal provisions of the Act, his tax liability would be thirty two five one zero, being lower than the tax liability under one one five BAC. Here the answer is correct, no, but the amount of tax under normal provision is wrong. Therefore, this answer is incorrect. Let's check what's institute's answer. Our answer is D. Institute's answer is also D. No, he should not opt for 115 BSC. Tax liability will be 22110. With that, this case scenario comes to an end. See you in the next video with the case scenario six.